Good afternoon and welcome to Salon Talks. I'm Allie Joseph and my guest today is Kay Cannon, the director yeah. of the very funny new comedy Blockers, opening April 6th, I think, yep. which Vanity Fair called a, quote, perfect comedy for the Me Too era, which I think that it is. <laughs> I oh, yeah, it's very <laughs> funny. Yeah, and we'll talk about why. Cannon wrote the Pitch Perfect movie franchise and was both writer and director on 30, excuse me, producer on 30 Rock and the EP behind Netflix's Girl Boss. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having thanks me. Thanks for being yeah. here. You've been on this, the, the publicity run and now do you get to relax or you get to go wait uh, for the movie to open? I gotta wait for the movie and, and, and be anxious and just hope people show up. <laughs> people yeah. will show up, but it, it did premiere at South by Southwest. Yeah. What, was, what was the room like? I have to say that I, it was the most amazing ex experience I've ever had in my career. I think it might be the height of my career because <laughs> the room was so lovely and they laughed at everything. It was so great. And I, I, I feel like, uh, I felt like halfway through that the whole audience was going to stand up, turn around and be like, we're punking you because <laughs> it was, they just really embraced it in like such a beautiful way. And Leslie Mann sat behind me and about halfway through, she like leaned over and she was like, holy shit. Like it was, it was they so, really liked yeah, it. it was just really great. It was fun. It was like a really fun experience. Like I, 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 I mean, I love the movie blockers for my own personal reasons, but like, I felt like. If you're gonna see it, watch it with a bunch of people because that, that that collective experience is really fun. Okay, I have to ask you: Is the trailer safe for work? Uh, I don't. I, not the first one. Okay, I well, think there's some new ones that are safe. The one that we have, yeah. so everyone knows what we're talking about. Um, I, should I say the c word? What the blockers refers to? Oh, yeah. Why don't you have a look at the trailer, and if you don't understand it, we'll come back and I will explain it to you. <laughs> Let's have a look. Just going through the laundry, found these new thongs. You know I love it when the music stops, but come and strip that down for me. Tonight, I'm tearing these off with my teeth like an old school cartoon billy goat. Yeah. Honey, Mitch, does your daughter's. Oh, God! Run! Run! I'm ready. You look beautiful. I used to hold that girl in the palm of my hand. Kayla's becoming a woman. You're gonna have to deal with that. Thanks. I was looking for that. We gonna light it up like it's brand new night. Dad, why are you here? You think I'm gonna miss the most important night of your young life? Isn't that graduation? Graduation is for losers. Tonight is the first night of our adult lives. I want to go to prom and lose my goddamn virginity. <laughs> prom night. It's kind of perfect. I'm in. Julie left her laptop open. You guys are snipping on our kids? All emojis have a secret meaning. Oh! Eggplants are dicks. This is some kind of a dick-related agreement. Maybe they're just saying, hey, you're okay with me. You're okay with me. I mean, maybe. What? Our girls are not thinking things through. I'm gonna stop them. I'm in. I'm fully planning on having sex tonight. Wherever the night takes us. The night's gonna take us there. Wherever the wind sails our ships. Your ship is going into my harbor. <laughs> They're getting away. WWVDD. What would Vin Diesel do? Hey, Fast and the Furious is completely unrealistic. It's not a documentary. I get that. I'll do anything for my daughter. What about a chugging contest? Bring it. No, no, we're chugging, right? We're butt chugging. On the count of three. Oh. They got a lager or an IPA. Oh. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't matter. Butt oh, my God. Butt chug. Jesus, he's spit roasting himself. Post run! Post run! Oh. Are you a team player or aren't you? I just chugged a 40 with my asshole. I'm a team player. Okay, you guys, welcome back. This is, of course, Kay Cannon, director of the very funny new film, Blockers, which comes out April 6th. That was the trailer. I assume by now you know what Blockers refers to, but why don't you give us the genesis of sort of the film and... Yeah. And, uh, and was um, it originally called that? No, it was, uh, it was, the script was first called Cherries, and then when I got the script, it was called The Pact. And then there was already a movie called The Pact a few years ago uh, that was, I think, like a thriller or something like that. Um, and so uh, then I was presented with it being called Blockers because um, 
these three best friends decide to lose their virginity. They make a pact to lose their virginity on prom night, and then the parents find out about it, and then they want to block them from having yeah, sex. They do, so, and so yeah. the, the, and there's I think probably a couple of trailers uh, floating around yeah. uh, that you may have seen on on airing on on television. Yeah, yeah. With the emojis and the, where the parents figure it out, and that is a very funny scene. But there yeah. are plenty of uh, movies chronicling the first times that guys have sex, right? But why did you feel that it was time to show in this very particular way women telling the stories of their first times in what would otherwise be a contrived way, like a sex right, pact, but right. making it a comedy and, and, and then making it the characters have a little more depth? Well, I felt like the story of from the female perspective of losing your virginity, I feel like, it, not that it hasn't been done before, but I, uh, I just felt like it was this underserved story that hasn't maybe been done in this way, meaning a rated R studio released comedy, like more mainstream. And I think that, um, I think a lot of, there's so many male filmmakers and they tell their, these stories from their points of view. So of course it comes from, you know, the guy's side and from their point of view, the women are often object, the young women are objects of desire. So that's how we see it. And in this case, I wanted to tell, I wanted to show, because I think young women are starving to see themselves on, you know, in this kind of story that that what they're what how they experience it and what it is like from their point of view and and I think it's like about time we see that right <laughs> like I think there's all, there's been all this kind of control over we still have it we have it you know it's a very old idea it's an antiquated idea of like trying to, like especially like the character of Mitchell that John Cena plays of you know trying to stop your daughter from having sex with some bad guy right. you know um, but I, I hope that when people see the movie they'll see that I tried to put a modern spin on it and, and address it and address how it's an old idea that we should be getting over and they and, and there's some really great twist with the character's personality too so you have seen yeah. this big you know meaty guy who might otherwise be perceived as just the you know the wrestling tough guy yeah but he's the sensitive dad who cries and no he doesn't want his daughter and he's to like run the stay-at-home and... dad who does laundry yeah. and takes care of the baby and, and his a... wife is yeah. the boss she, <laughs> she and is. she is boss she was great in this yeah. in this film so for years, you've written and produced award-winning sitcoms and, and films like Pitch Perfect, uh, which you wrote. Uh -huh. And But with blockers, you put on the director's hat. So yeah. what made you want to change roles? Oh, that's a good question. I, I felt like I was ready. I honestly thought that the first thing I would ever direct was television. I had no idea that uh, I would my first time directing anything would be a, a studio comedy, mm -hmm. <laughs> especially rated R, because I never did rated any rated R anything. Um, but it's but, such fun. It is so much fun. <laughs> oh, I was clutching my pearls the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was, but to be honest, like I was offered to direct this movie, like straight up offer from Good Universe and Point Grey and Universal and, or I'm sorry, uh, from Good Universe and Point Grey. Um, and that was really exciting to me because I was being asked to direct something based off potential. And then when I read the script and felt like it covered the themes of things that I connected to, it was like, this is great. Of course I want to do this. Yeah. That's great that yeah. you were you know, asked to do this from the start. Yeah. So now having done all three creative roles, do you have one that you prefer? Oh, um, I prefer uh, writing and directing equally. And I think my, the next thing I should try to do is direct something that I write, mm -hmm. uh, which... Uh, I hope I could do it. <laughs> Actually, why? Because you wouldn't be able to detach enough. You know? No, I, well, I think I'm I'm really into collaborating, and so I I like like a, a team effort, and uh, and I want to make sure that I'm getting that, even though it's like maybe coming, you know, from my point of view. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want anything that was my point of view only. <laughs> So let's go back a little bit in the Wayback Machine you. to when the little Kay decided <laughs> that she wanted to write movies and TV. Was there mm. uh, an aha moment? Did you have an, a mentor? Uh, uh, Tina Fey is my mentor, whether she likes it or not. Uh, and uh, I started writing out of necessity. I was a performer, actor, who uh, an improviser, and I just wasn't getting work. So I started to write for myself to show that what I what I could do, you know? And then um, Tina read the stuff that I was writing. And then when 30 Rock came around, she, when she wanted to hire me for it, she asked me two questions. Um, she said, uh, she thought that 30 Rock was only gonna last 13 episodes. Mm -hmm. And she said, if, if are you okay not performing for a whole year? And 
I was like, of course I'm okay. And I hadn't had a job in like a year and a half or something like that. So I was just desperate to work. And then she said, if I ever have to fire you, because you know, she was really taking a chance on me. I hadn't written anything other than sketch before this. Um, she said, are you going to be, okay? you know, like, will we be okay as friends? And I just said to her, like, I look forward to the day you fire me. <laughs> like I, and, and then I got hired at 30 Rock and I feel like I blinked and it's 10 years later and I'm, I just kind of kept writing and not performing and then started to write Pitch Perfect while I was at 30 Rock, you know, like it all kind of happened. You got a little emotional there. Oh, I, I'm holding or, back a sneeze. Oh, okay. I, I can't. I thought she was so happy no. and touched that <laughs> Tina was her friend and mentor that she was tearing up. Okay, hold it. It's hard to hold the sneeze. I've had coughing fits on here. Oh, you have? It is ugly. <laughs> Yeah, people are like, Ugh, I'm going to get the influenza. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's talk about the percentage of uh, women directors in Hollywood yeah. and especially the, point, the amount. Point, oh, no, no, oh. it's, it, there's an 11, <laughs> there's a point at decimal after, 11% uh, of all directors in the top films last year were women. Okay. So when you hear these bleak, it is still bleak. Yeah. You know, uh, how do you react to that? Uh, it's so unfortunate because there has been countless examples of female-driven projects that have been hugely successful. And I'm not quite sure why that's not translating into an increase of that percentage. You know, it's all based on lists, like who's on the list. Like when agents send out lists of like, you know, what director can do this and what writer can do that or whatever. And, you know, that the lists haven't gotten longer in terms of green lighting movies and all that kind of stuff, it's it's really frustrating. Mm -hmm. And um, I think what's so great about the Times Up movement is that they can no longer have short-term memories. They can no longer suggest that Wonder Woman is an anomaly. It isn't. We have countless you know examples of you know between Bridesmaids and Pitch Perfect Two and uh, Trainwreck and Spy and I mean just endless mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that did big business. I don't know. It's frustrating. Well, actually, that's a, an unintentional but good segue from Time's Up to Me Too. Uh -huh. um, is it in the era of Me Too, is it important for women to make raunchy companies like blockers? And do you feel that you had to come at it differently as a woman uh -huh. or face criticism at all? No, it, you know, we shot it before me, the mm -hmm. Me Too movement. And all of these ideas and thoughts and things were important to me in the film and as the filmmaker, uh, you know, we were talking about, they, they've been important forever. And it's like not necessarily something that um, maybe people cared about or whatever. But like, for so when I got the script, I remember having conversations with the producers about consent. I was like, mm -hmm. Kayla has to tell Connor that she wants to have sex with him before she takes a sip of alcohol. And, and, it, and, and I worked with some amazing, great guy. I mean, they're just, they're really great. And um, they were like, oh, well, no, they can be partying or whatever. I was like, no, 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 no. no. She has to tell him exactly, you know, what she wants out of the night. Otherwise, it's not consent. And, you know, so there was a lot of conversations about that or, like, female friendships or, like, what, what's real about these young women. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask you, uh, I mean, especially in light of, of the things that have gotten so much larger in the public yeah. consciousness um, that are important about consent and yeah. uh, women's bodies and women's rights. Uh, and Vanity Fair did describe blockers as the ultimate sort of comedy for the Me Too era because <laughs> there is that sensitivity, I think. And there's so much sexual humor, but no, at no time in the film do, does it seem like the young women characters are not in control of their situation sure. and their yeah. destiny, even though they're young. And this was, it sounds like, a very conscious choice. Yeah, you know, I wanted them to show them having agency over their own bodies. I wanted to, like, make sure that there was specificity with each, with each daughter and what she wanted. Did. Also, I, the guys are so great. Like their dates are all like you know they're good listeners. And if if, if one of the you know daughters said no, they were like okay yeah 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 you know <laughs> like and I wanted to show that because I think I think that uh, I think there's just so many good guys out there mm -hmm. who are so re respectful. And if you show that respect on screen amidst a comedy, you're kind of you're being an example for all these guys watching the movie who are laughing through it but then seeing 
seeing it done the right way, you know? Sure, and that could be yeah. the ultimate takeaway. That, yeah, you know, In yeah, fact, um, this is the right way to behave. Yeah. Uh, I did read you have a young daughter. Yeah. And so... She's awesome. On the... <laughs> four, right? She's Amazing. Four, yeah. That's such a fun age. Uh, so, it, and, and in keeping with this idea of you know the era that we we are in, what can you share with her that's age appropriate about growing up a strong, confident, and sort of take no crap girl? Yeah. I have a daughter as well. I think that's really vital. Yeah, I I um I am constantly on her about not on her, but I ask her I'll be like, do you love yourself? And she'll be like. I love myself, I love my body, I love, you know, and it's all about health, it's about being strong, and it's like, you know, I tell her to thank her arms for allowing her to be able to move and hug, and thank her knees for being able to jump, and, and everything, and so I try, I, I'm, I really feel like our job as parents is to, like, to ensure that she feels good about herself, because all this other outside stuff that's going to happen in her life, and all the bad stuff, is like, if she has this knows that we love her and that she loves herself, I think it's going to be a little bit easier. I mean, nothing's really easy, but it, it, sure. hopefully. Well, instilling that confidence is so important. Yeah. If you guys are just joining us, this is Kay Cannon. She's the director of the forthcoming film Blockers, which comes out on April 6th. She's very excited. <laughs> she be very confident about this film. It's Thanks. very funny. Um, I, I, I do think, though, that the writers uh, of this film are two brothers, uh, the Kehoe brothers, uh -huh. and of course you said there, there are many people who, who worked on this and, and worked on some of the writing as well towards the end. In trying to make, make Girl Boss, which is on, um, on Netflix, um, an adaptation of uh, Sofia Amoruso's book, yeah. right? There was a lot of backlash I read about studios not wanting to make that series, also about a woman protagonist, uh -huh. uh, because she was not likable to men. And I wonder, you know, how did you help it find a home amidst that kind of criticism? Well, um, I, you know, I, studio, the studio that I was working for that we pitched to that said, like, I don't know you got to make it more accessible to men and not call it girl boss. <laughs> and I was like, but that's what the book is called. <laughs> yeah. um, that they're, they're coming from a different, you know, like that was for like broadcast uh, television. So they have a different, you know, formula or business plan to the, of what shows they're going to pick up and what, sure. they, what they feel like they need. So I, I understood they were coming from that position. We went to Netflix because Netflix was, it was great. Like the Netflix, um, allowed us to make the show that we wanted to make mm -hmm. and um, you know like and and it let us embrace this idea of telling a true story about a woman and how she pretty much was and that she was gonna grow up and learn things but that like she like she describes herself as as an asshole you mm -hmm. know and and um, and so we, we set out to make that show. I feel like we did that show. Mm -hmm. And then the critics were a little tough on us. And that, I mean, like, and, and the critics being the audience. Like, the audiences, when they watched it, they weren't on board with her. And I hope someday that there are so many lead female protagonists who tell so many different kinds of stories mm -hmm. that we're not, like, um, suggesting that Sophia's story is an indictment on, on women and you know on feminism or whatever i was just trying to tell a real story i wasn't trying to be like this manifesto of like female empowerment i mean i i feel it, that her story is those things but i think we should be able to show unlikable characters it's so ingrained in us as women to watch flawed unlikable male characters it's not we're not yet there yet when we see women not quite yeah not quite but you know and she and she is I've watched three episodes last night she you know yeah. she's a little abrasive yeah. on, a, on a lot of levels and yet you want to I don't know I wanted to root for her and Me yet too. some women didn't so sisters support her <laughs> support I found her, her sisters she was, the one thing I wanted to say is, is that like I read somewhere where they said like uh, Handmaid's Tale which is a show I love Handmaid's Tale gets feminism right and girl boss gets it wrong. Hmm. And I was like, hold on a second. These are two totally different shows. Like, is feminism correct with Hand Handmaid's Tale because they have no choices and they're being controlled and they're and so we're that's why we're rooting for that right. or that there's or, even a show about that yeah yeah, yeah. i don't know uh, well don't yes know. you've come a long way baby and still have a long way to go no surprise yeah. there so best piece of advice before we wrap for a young woman director Ooh. who is struggling to have her voice heard in hollywood well i mean you have to do the work you have to 
if you're a director, like, you have to show your work and show the things that, that you're doing. I mean, I know I didn't direct before directing, but I had been on sets for 10 years, and I had produced television and been a showrunner. I mean, like, a, I had, in that way, I had just never stopped working. Um, but the one thing that you cannot do is you cannot quit. And there's going to be times you're going to be tired. You're going to be minimized. You're going to be disrespected. Um, you put it in, into a box, if you will, and mm -hmm. you you just can't quit. And so even if, trust me, like I, I went years without getting work. Like you, the minute you quit, you take yourself out of the game, we'll never get those numbers up. <laughs> never, never, to quote a famous man, I need a famous woman quote, uh -huh. never give up. Never give up. Yeah. Never give up. Thank you so much for coming and joining us today. I Thank can't you. wait for, for everybody watching all around the world here to see Blockers, which comes out on April 6th nationwide. 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 Yeah. April 6th. Oh, also, you can see it, uh, it April 4th for free. We're doing a Blockers Ooh. Spring Fling. You go to blockerspringfling.com. And there's a hundred uh, screenings over 50 cities. So check it out and see if you can get yourself a free ticket. All right. Say the URL again. Uh, Blockerspringfling.com. Bro blockers. I can't even say it. No. <laughs> blockers. It's, it's midday. <laughs> blockers. <laughs> Blockerspringfling.com. Go ahead and check it out on April 4th and try to get yourself to a free screening in a city near you. Thank you so yeah. much for joining us. Thank you so phone. much. Thanks. Come back again. Yeah, we'll of see course you again I will. Yeah. Have a great afternoon.